Edwig, also spelled Edwy, usually called the All Fair, was King of England from 955 until his premature death in 959. The oldest son of King Edmund I and his Queen Eilf Gifu of Shaftesbury, Edwig became king in 955 following the death of his uncle Edred. Edwig's short reign was tarnished by disputes with nobles and men of the church, including Dunstan and Archbishop Hoda. Edwig died in 959, having ruled less than four years. He was buried in the capital Winchester. His brother Edgar the Peaceful succeeded him, King of England. Feud with Dunstan According to one legend, the feud with Dunstan began on the day of Edward's consecration, when he failed to attend a meeting of nobles. When Dunstan eventually found the young monarch, he was cavorting with a noblewoman named Ethel Gifu and refused to return with the bishop. Infuriated by this, Dunstan dragged Edward back and forced him to renounce the girl as a strumpet. Later realizing that he had provoked the king, Dunstan fled to the apparent sanctuary of his cloister, but Edwig, incited by Ethel Gifu, followed him and plundered the monastery. Though Dunstan managed to escape, he refused to return to England until after Edwig's death. The contemporary record of the Anglo-Saxon Chronicle reports Edward's accession and Dunstan fleeing England, but does not explain why Dunstan fled. Thus this report of a feud between Edward and Dunstan could either have been based on a true incident of a political quarrel for power between a young king and powerful church officials who wished to control the king and who later spread this legend to blacken his reputation or it could be mere folklore. The Chronicle also tells of Ardo putting aside the king's marriage on the grounds Edwig and his wife were, too, related. The account of the quarrel with Dunstan and Sinejage, Bishop of Lichfield at the coronation feast is recorded in the Anglo-Saxon Chronicle and in the later Chronicle of John of Worcester and was written by monks supportive of Dunstan's position. The cavorting in question consisted of Edwig being away from the feast with Eilf Gifu and her mother Ethel Gifu. He later married Eilf Gifu, who seems to have been the sister of Ethel Weird the chronicler. Ethel Weird describes himself as the grandson's grandson of King Ethel Redai. Edwig was the son of King Edmund the Magnificent, grandson of King Edward the Elder, great-grandson of King Alfred the Great and therefore great-great-nephew of King Ethel Redai. Edwig and Eilf Gifu were therefore third cousins once removed. Annulment of marriage The annulment of the marriage of Edwig and Eilf Gifu is unusual in that it was against their will, clearly politically motivated by the supporters of Dunstan. The church at the time regarded any union within seven degrees of consanguinity as incestuous. At the time, degree was reached by counting up to the common ancestor and back. A second cousin would have been related within the sixth degree. Division of the Kingdom Dunstan, whilst in exile, became influenced by the Benedictines of Flanders. A pro-Dunstan, pro-Benedictine party began to form around Athelstan half King's domain of East Anglia and supporting Edward's younger brother Edgar. Frustrated by the king's impositions and supported by Archbishop Oda of Canterbury, the thanes of Mercia and Northumbria switched their allegiance to Edward's brother Edgar. In 957, rather than see the country descend into civil war, the nobles agreed to divide the kingdom along the Thames, with Edward keeping Wessex and Kent in the south and Edgar ruling in the north. Charter Evidence Edwig is known for his remarkable generosity in giving away land. In 956 alone, his 60-odd gifts of land make up around 5% of all genuine Anglo-Saxon charters. No known ruler in Europe matched that yearly total before the 12th century, and his sessions are plausibly attributed to political insecurity. Edward died at a young age in 959, in circumstances which remain unknown. 
He was succeeded by his brother Edgar the Peaceful, who reunited the kingdom. In art and literature, the history of Edwig's reign caught the British imagination in the later 18th century, and was represented in paintings and drama, in particular, by numerous works to 1850. Artists who tackled the subjects it suggested included William Bromley, William Hamilton, William Dice, Richard Dadd, and Thomas Rhodes. Literary works were written by Thomas Sedgwick Worley, Thomas Warwick and Francis Burney.